Okay, so let's imagine that you've just downloaded your data for a particular station in the world. My example here is using Manchester Airport. Before you actually do anything with the data, there's always a pre-processing stage where you want to clean the data set up. These first two columns contain garbage. We don't need those. They're station code values. You're not going to need those in your analysis, so you can highlight them and then just delete them. This column tells you the year, the month, and the day. So the year 2000, 01 for January, and 01 for the 1st of January. The next row, because this is daily data, is almost identical, but the last two characters tells you the day, the 0, 2, and 3, and 4, and so on. The first row, uh, column rather, of data that we want to keep is this one, which is temperature. But the temperature values are in Fahrenheit which is what America tends to use for its temperature readings, whereas we in Europe tend to use degrees Celsius or centigrade. So one thing we can do is just convert these temperature values into the units of measurement that are most appropriate to the United Kingdom. So to do this, I'm going to just insert by right-clicking on the, the column to the right of the one. I want to change and click Insert. So now I've got a new blank column. And I'm going to rename that temp C because that's going to be the temperature values in Celsius. And there's a simple formula to calculate the Celsius temperature from the Fahrenheit temperature. And to do this, I click in the first cell, that's the first row and column of this new variable temperature in Celsius. And I put in a simple formula. All formulas begin with equal, so that tells Excel that I'm, I'm wanting to calculate something. But what I'm calculating is, in brackets, the degrees Fahrenheit value, and I select that just by clicking on it. I subtract from that the value of 32, close brackets, and then I multiply, using the asterisk symbol, by 5 over 9. So that's the complete formula. That will convert whatever value is in B2 into degrees Celsius by applying this formula. So I just click on the tick. There we go. It's changed 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. But it would take forever to type in that formula all the way down for all of these other days. But luckily there's a feature in Excel called Autofill. And to use autofill, you highlight the, the cell that contains the formula you want to copy. And in the bottom right hand corner, where there's a little square, I move the cursor and it becomes a cross. Then I click and I drag all the way to the bottom of the file. And there are several thousand cells here that I want to convert, so it takes a while to get all the way down to the bottom. There's 10 years worth of data. And then I just let go of the mouse. And now you can see that what that's done is copy the formula from this first cell into every cell below it. And all that's changed is the bit that references the value on the left hand side, which is the temperature in Fahrenheit. So now I want to reformat that because it's some of them have got six decimal places, which is not what we're going to be using. We're we'll using it to two decimal places. So I highlight that data again. Okay, and when it's finished highlighting it, I right click and I select Format Cells. Quite a lot of data, so it takes some time. And I want a number to two decimal places and just click on OK. So now this column contains the data I want to use for temperature, so I'm going to highlight it and click on bold so that it stands out. I can do the same here with dew point. The dew point is a temperature value, and of course, this is also in Fahrenheit. So remember, I highlight to the right of the dew point column. 
right hand mouse click, insert. Now I have a blank column. I'm going to call this due P and C for centigrade. And it's similar to the previous, uh, it's almost identical to the previous formula, so it begins with equal open brackets, the value of dew point in Fahrenheit that I want to convert, minus 32, close brackets, multiplied by 5 over 9, and then use the little tick to accept that. And now I'm going to also fill that all the way to the bottom of the file, so that all of the 10 years of data, the daily data, will now be converted from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, and again I want to format that to two decimal places, so I just choose right click, format cells, number, and two decimal places, OK. And because that's the Celsius version, I'm just going to highlight that in bold again. So now I've got this column, which is encoded the year, the month, and the day. I've got my temperature in Celsius. I've got my dew point in Celsius. One other thing that might be useful is to have separate variables for the year, the month, and the day, rather than having the year and the month and the day all encoded into one variable. So I need to create three separate columns for three different variables, one for the year, one for the month, and one for the day. So right click, insert, and again, and a third time. So now I'm going to call this one year, this one month, and this one day. So how do I extract just those characters from this string that represent the year. Well, the year is actually coded into the first four. In this example, 2000 for the year 2000. So there is a function, and you get access to different functions here, which is a string function. So where it says select category, there's one for text, text strings. And the one we want is mid. Mid allows us to extract from a long text string just those characters that we're interested in. So I select mid, click on OK. Now it wants to know, OK, what text do I want to extract data from? Well, it's this value here, which is the first column, and it's this row. So I just click on it. Then it's asking me, where is the starting position? Well, it's actually the first character. So I put in one. And then how many characters does it want to extract? It's the first four, so I put in four. And then click on OK. And then again, I'm going to also fill that all the way to the bottom of the file. Okay, there we go, and I let go. So now you can see that this column simply contains the year that's been extracted. In actual fact, I'd like this to now be seen by Excel as a number rather than a string. And to do that, you highlight the data, which Excel currently sees as a text string. Then choose right click. Format cells and choose number. And because it's a year, we don't need any decimal places. Set that to zero. Click on OK. Now we do the same for the month. So we go back here to formulas and choose mid. The text is going to be the same text string we used before, but this time. We're starting at character number five, the fifth one along. And that's the month, and it uses two characters, two numbers. So we select two, and then OK. So we've got zero, 01 for January, the first month of the year. And we can also fill that again. OK. 
Okay, and let go and you can see that 12 is December, 11 November, 10 is October, and so on, all the different months of the year. Again, I'd like to convert that kind of string to a number, and I don't need any decimal places for that. And then finally, the day, mid again. Same text string, 